Samuel Morse, That's Who, The Story of the Telegraph and Morse Code, an abridged version, written by Tracy Nelson Maurer and illustrated by El Primo Ramon. Back when Samuel Morse was a boy, news wasn't usually new by the time folks heard it. A letter could ride for weeks between towns or sail for months between countries. In the early 1800s, nothing traveled long distances fast. So who would dream of instant messages? Samuel Morse, that's who. But first, he dabbled with other inventions, though without much success. The water pump he designed with his brother, almost nobody bought it. His marble cutting machine? Already patented. He experimented with wild paint mixes, too. Milk for a pearly effect, glazes for glossy finishes, even beer for some reason. Truth be told, Samuel fancied himself an artist and a fancy one at that. But he mostly painted portraits, tromping from town to town to earn money. His dream? Painting grand scenes, Hercules dying, Bible stories, historic battles. He believed his talent would raise America's boorish taste in art. Success always seemed one step ahead for Samuel. His beautiful artwork earned little attention and even less money. Still, Samuel hoped Americans would learn to love fine art, especially his He sailed for Europe in 1829 to study the old world masters. He would paint a huge picture of their art to show back in the United States. Day after day for more than a year, he painted in France. Samuel finally stored his massive painting aboard the good ship Sully and sailed for home in 1832. Talk on deck drifted between not-so-new news and the possibilities for electricity. Was it simply a toy? Could this liquid lightning ever be useful? Their chats sparked an idea for Samuel. He drew a system that would use electric pulses to instantly carry coded messages through wires between two machines. Samuel also sketched a code using dots and dashes to stand for numbers. Each number meant a certain word. He figured he'd need about 30,000 numbers and one very big code book. Back in New York City, Samuel proudly unveiled his masterpiece. And as before, not many people noticed. Folks took great interest, however, in his ideas for an electromagnetic telegraph machine. Delightful, amusing. But how would such an electric contraption ever be useful? Who would show them? Samuel Morse, that's who. He began working in earnest on his telegraph. He experimented with an alphabet code. He gave the most frequently used letters the easiest symbols to send messages faster. For example, just one dot could stand for an E. Samuel also tinkered with clock parts to move a paper tape that recorded the messages. He strung wires around his studio to test his work. But Samuel was still an artist at heart. He needed help. He shared his idea with two friends, science professor Leonard Gale and the machine-minded Alfred Bale. The team clicked. Samuel set aside his paints to focus on the invention. Eventually, Samuel asked the U.S. Congress to fund a telegraph line between Baltimore and Washington, D.C. After a long and blustery debate, Congress agreed. Samuel set his deadline for December 1843. Delay followed delay. Samuel's team finally set to digging trenches along the route in October. They buried the cable in lead pipes. Then, with only months left, crash! The trenching plow hit a boulder and crumpled. While it was repaired, Samuel tested their work so far nothing. The team discovered that poorly made pipes had caused the wires to fail in damp soil. Samuel needed another plan, and fast. Well, it stood to reason that if the wire didn't work below ground, 
then perhaps the best solution was above ground. In March, the team went back to work. They strung wires between tall chestnut poles. They covered about a mile a day, rain or shine. The telegraph line crossed into Baltimore more than a week ahead of the demonstration planned for May 24, 1844. The big day came. Samuel sat at his machine in the U.S. Supreme Court chamber. His assistant, Alfred Vail, set up his machine in a Baltimore train depot. Samuel tapped a coded message to Alfred. Benny waited. Moments later, the machine clattered. Dit da da, dit 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 dit. Alfred had replied with the same message. What hath God wrought? <gasps> Success! In time, telegraph lines stitched the United States together from coast to coast. Undersea cables linked America to Europe and beyond. Everything from train arrivals to news reports ticker ticked in Morse code from city to city in seconds. Governments, businesses, friends, and families, telegrams connected them all. So, who made electricity useful? Who created instant messages and changed the world forever? Samuel Morse, that's who. You are listening to Confetti Park, a podcast brought to you by confettipark.com.